win streaks continue as we enter day two of week seven. Let's see who can keep their mojo with our matches today. Team Liquid have some moxie they want to keep going. We'll see if FlyQuest can play spoiler in game one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we honor some of our pros and share some of the nuances of a split push until the timer reaches zero and we jump into champion select. Hello, gentlemen. How are you doing this fine Sunday morning? I'm doing well, Dash. I got every single prediction right yesterday. So you're riding a high right now, but that, that sets back. a bar for today. Mark, how about you? I'm feeling pretty good. I didn't get the 5-0, but we're still tied. And I'm pretty confident that Jad will go 0-5 today and just completely <laughs> undo all the hard work from yesterday. I got I'm bad, I I got exactly bad news. Yeah, I was going to say, I got same. bad news for you <laughs> if he goes 0-5. But uh, let's <laughs> kick things off by looking at how the teams rank going into the day. Team Liquid holds on to first. FlyQuest and Optic Gaming are in fourth at 7-6, and six, while Cloud9 and TSM share sixth place, just one game behind them. We'll see how much those positions change, though, with our schedule presented by Jersey Mike Subs. First up, FlyQuest hope to take down first place Team Liquid with 100 Thieves challenging Golden Guardians later in the day. But before that, for game three, Freak, Wild Turtle, and JJ will be taking to the NALCS Lounge to bring you Echo Fox versus TSM on Riot Games 2. If you need a little help getting to the summer finals, the solution could be ordering a sub above at jerseymikes.com where using the promo code JMNALCS enters you into a sweepstakes for a VIP trip to the Oracle Arena just a month away. Now, going into his matchup in game one, Kane says they aren't taking first place for granted. Thanks, guys. Kane said that Team Liquid is feeling great after locking in first place, but they are not about to underestimate any teams. They said in particular yesterday's early game left some room for improvement, so that's what they're going to focus on. When it comes to their match against FlyQuest today, he knows that the game's not going to be easy, and in particular, they're going to be on the lookout for Flame in the top lane. Now, when it comes to the famous FlyQuest base races, he's pretty confident in Team Liquid's ability to have good wave control and keep their Nexus safe. Back to you guys. Not going to rest on their laurels as they've grabbed hold of first place, but in a split where we can't stop talking about parity, Team Liquid is knocking on the door of 10-4. and four. That's a pretty solid record. Right, they had another comeback victory as well. There's a time when they fell behind and felt like all hope was gone, but now after putting a couple of these together in a row, they are showing a new dimension to them as they pick up these wins, and they keep shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, but the fact that they yeah. are able to come back is actually super impressive. Yeah, it's a four-game winning streak now for them having taken down the team that was tied, tying them for first yep. yesterday. And they're actually better in record at this point in the summer split than they were in spring. And if you remember, they are the spring split champions. So with all the topsy turviness of the NLCS, Team Liquid's looking incredibly strong. To add on top of it, they were the team that stuck with 80 carries the whole time. Now Funnel is nerfed, 80 carries are getting buffed next patch. So not only is Team Liquid in first, I feel like they get stronger from here on out. Yeah, without a doubt, they're sitting pretty in first, and things only look to get better for them as the days go on. Last week, though, we discussed how some of FlyQuest wins came from these really close games. And yesterday, luck didn't seem to be on their side. Yeah, this is one of those games that they had been winning in the past, but they've been struggling a lot uh, with how Keen has been performing. In that game, it didn't wasn't obvious like he was whiffing ultimates, but when you saw his DPM numbers, it was lower than the Braum on his team. And when he is performing well, the team always seems to win. And then in their losses, he's a complete non-factor, either dying all the time or in that game, just not actually finding any even QW combos on the people to chunk them out. Yeah, and some of this is actually side-related or draft-related. He's undefeated on Zoe, 4-0, but actually 6-0 on blue side for FlyQuest and 1-6 on red side. Ooh, they are red side today, by the way. Oh, also bad, against Team Liquid which makes it a little more difficult. So it is about finding consistency. Really, I do feel like in that mid lane for Keen, he's mainly only found success on Zoe this split. He's had a good Galio game, a good Oriana game, but has looked underwhelming the majority of the time on those things. So I want to see what St. Fitch's solution for that is come this next draft. Right, Mark, I know you think that Keen is very important to the success of this team. Of course, that doesn't mean that the other players, you know, don't, don't necessarily uh, facilitate a win or a loss, but that revolving around that mid lane and his individual performance is key to victory for them. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes you just consider mid lane kind of the linchpin of the map, and so when he's not playing well, everything else starts to fall apart. And over the course of the split, different people have stepped up. Santorin was really hot at the beginning, and Flame seemed like he was struggling. Santorin's no longer kind of carrying some of these games, but Flame had a fantastic GP game yesterday, uh, but they couldn't find the win because they just weren't getting that help from the Orion in the mid. All right, well, when it comes to their loss yesterday, St. Vicious felt it was a wake-up wake call, rather, for the team. 
I was pretty confident going into this week, but we threw our game versus Optic yesterday, so we're a little bit tilted from that, but hopefully, you know, we learned from, relearned from some of the mistakes, and we won't make those in the TL game, and we should be able to go in confident. Usually how I, I've been doing my coaching is I just make a one or two people a project for the week, and then I, like, work really hard on that individual person and try to, like, make their role better in the team, and then, like, we just kind of go over general mistakes um, so it's not like a specific thing, it's just like making it a little by little bit uh, better with each piece. League is a game about tempo and you can basically play like chicken with people. If there's a lot, I feel like a lot of teams in NA don't understand tempo and like who's going to be there faster. Like who's, who's like back in the 2v1 meta, uh, you know, it'd be like these not base race situations, but like who's going to back first. And I think a lot of our players played in that meta. And so we just kind of understand that where it's like, we're not going to back if you don't back. So. Um, if we actually like, have the advantage in the speed, then we're just going to go for it. Playing a game of chicken, oh, yeah. talking about tempo. But I also really like uh, his comment on improvement and how he works with uh, individuals more so than maybe taking a look at the, the team holistically and saying, hey, let me try and solve 27 problems at once. Right. I mean, a team is a group of individuals. Yes. So while you can say all of us need to communicate better, you can also <laughs> just say like, hey, this guy's warding numbers are too low or you're really struggling in these matchups or with backing off when you don't have vision. Like those are all individual things you can work on that do benefit the whole team. All right. Well, with what these coaches have said in mind in our first matchup of the day. I want to get some win conditions on the board. First up, Jack, you get FlyQuest on red side. You said it's yeah. going to be difficult for them, but how do they do it? I had to become more elaborate than usual. <laughs> oh, so get here the full we go. screen. The full uh, screen. Trade OP picks. Their only one win was on red side where they were able to pick Zoe and then pre-rework Aatrox, which was still effective. They did that by giving up a lot of the OP picks. So these are the targets that they try to get on red side with the first two picks they have. You can go with Zoe, Aatrox, Aatrox, Varus, or Braum. All those would be very good picks that normally they win with on blue side. Mm -hmm. That means you target ban instead of try and ban OPs. So I'm hoping they go for Malzahar, Morgana, and Rakan as just some target bans to try and weaken them down. So assuming those target bans, now I'm going to put you in the shoes of Team Liquid, Jack. Yeah. What do you think Team Liquid's first priority is in that draft? Well, that's the thing. There's a chance that it's still Kindred, which would be mm. great. Uh, I don't know if Team Liquid wants to play through Impact's uh, Aatrox. I don't know if they'd want to play through through Pobelt or Zoe. They also have the chance of banning out a few of those things, which is why you're trying to just kind of shotgun. And as I said, one is six red side. <laughs> things are looking grim. Time to mix it up. Uphill battle, Mark. Jet has a very thorough plan for beating your team in Team Liquid, but what are your win conditions here? Win condition, uh, don't do a <laughs> TL level one. No, no more of these Team Liquid level ones where the you're, four trying, minute level one. you're taking E level one, <laughs> trying to push it in and yeah. die. You're getting double flash blown and then getting killed. Just don't do any of that stuff. That's and pretty simple. Yeah, unlike yeah. Jat, my the team the that I'm representing here is already the heavy favorite both in standings and on side. So I feel like I don't need to give too much advice to them. I think they'll figure it you out. You got off with uh, easy I homework. I got the easy yeah, homework. Yeah, you got the easy homework last night. Now, before we go to break, we saw Optic Gaming continue their win streak off, the, uh, off of rather back-to-back -back split push victories last week. And Azale wanted to share how those wins are more than just a top lane pick. Thank you very much, Stash. So, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about split push. And we've all seen it. The fewer are running down the side lane, getting those solo kills, taking turrets, and hogging all the credit. But what about the other four members on the team? I want to shine a little bit of light on the trials and tribulations of the four-man squad when it comes to the split push. So much of the success of that man in the side lane is down to these four members who are trying to maintain pressure on the map. If you sit back under your turrets, you know, you're not going to be having any presence on the map. You're not going to be kind of buying time and you're giving up too many objectives. And here in this game, we can see, you know, Optic with the four-man squad, they're out around Baron, they're maintaining vision, they're maintaining pressure. And this is just buying so much time for Dokla so they don't fully commit to the fight. They don't get hard engaged on and get wiped. They're also out at Baron creating pressure. And that's giving Dokla the time to get advantages in the side lane, knock down a tier two. And that's a, an example really of, of where it kind of did work out. And we do have a second replay where you know, Dokla is not really in position. So again, the four-man squad here is out on the map and we can roll the play. And they, they do have, again, vision around Baron. They are creating pressure. But unfortunately, you know, Dokla does not have the wave pushed up just yet. There is not enough pressure in that side lane. There are no easy objectives for him to take. So when this engage comes in, you know, they're actually using their TP uh, to a fight that is not being committed to. So this is really kind of 
a mistake on the side of Optic where the four-man squad needs to wait for Doklo to be further up in that side lane before they are posturing forward. You want to make sure that when you are buying this time, when you are doing so well around that Baron, that your split pusher is in position to be taking objectives, to be really cashing in on that. And, and I think Optic did a great job overall in this weekend, but these are just a couple little highlights of some of the times they did it right, some of the times they did it wrong. Back to you, Dash. Thank you very much, Azale. Control of the map and tempo. We already heard yep. Saint talking about it. That you know, and this is one of the teams that's both won via split push and or base race and has had to play against it in FlyQuest. But it's an interesting conversation around which teams prefer to maybe index towards that strategy, but how hard it is to execute, and then which teams just forgo the four one and say, hey, let's just face five v five and see who wins the team fight. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more. Uh people comfortable with the 5v5 split, uh, just team fight. The split push requires you to have certain draft strategies as well as, like Azale was saying there, the buy-in of the other four to know that while the spotlight's not on them, they need to be kind of running decoying distraction. All right, well, there you have it. When we return, we've got more NALCS countdown. But before we go, let's listen on the comms that Azale just broke down in that optics split push victory. Great secret. That is just a secret arrow. Nobody can know. Oh, You're not supposed okay, to say okay, it, bro. Okay. It was our secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. can know. Uh, bottom missing long time. Holy sh. Fighting. You got top kill. Good job. Nice. All right. If you can't go for that cannot, I would think. Nice. nice. I'm going to crab, guys. Come to crab with you. Yeah, come to crab with me, fam. Chen's in. I'm moving to mid. Make your flash. Probably here. Careful. I'm moving to you guys. I'm from. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Careful, back up. I'm almost there. I'm almost here. Can we turn with me? Look, look, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. turn, turn. Oh, Victor, 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 Victor. Victor, Victor. No flash, no flash. Victor. Hey, don't fight long. Varus will TP, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Bye, bye, bye. I think Grim's here. Can I fight? I'm yeah, here. I'm here. You, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Behind you. GP, no. He's missing right now, but. We're fighting, Grim. I am coming. Chen ulted. Chen ulted. They're going hard, guys. He's rooted. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm moving you guys. I'm moving you guys. Jungler is dead. I think just kill that guy. Kill the Shen, kill the Shen. Kill the Shen, kill the Shen, kill the Shen, back, kill the Shen, back, 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 back. Can we maybe help him? No. I kill him, I kill him, I kill him, I kill him. Shen out. Nice. No vision. Okay. Pressure, 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 pressure. He wins, he wins, he wins. I win, I win. Everyone pressure mid, everyone pressure mid. Nice. I'm gonna rush mid, you guys forward there. I'm gonna hit mid and hit, okay? Okay, okay, okay. You can try to stall them and make it a 50 50. If you stall, I end for sure. They're going, they're going. Hold you. Did you? Might be dead, actually. I'm trying to stall them. We have to bay, we have to bay. AK, AK. AK. I end, I end. Go for yeah, the yeah, Take a stall, take a stall, slow chase, slow chase. They might try to go for end. Hey, we, we, we need base, we need base, we need base. I'm gonna stop them. Grenades go, grenades go, grenades go. Go, 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 go. I'm on my next one. Give me 10 seconds. Five. I, I go, I go, I go, I go. Oh my god, we actually lose. GP on HP, GP on HP, GP on HP, GP on HP. End, 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 end. I'm heading. I go, I go, I go. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. 12 and a half minutes away from Champion Select. While we award player of the game, some performances deserve a little something extra. So we're going to bestow some additional accolades by using the honor system. First up, we're awarding Stayed Cool to Xmithy for his game yesterday. Not hitting level two until four minutes into the game. Disastrous level one, but he pulls it back. Yeah, this was a, a tough one to watch. Anyone who's ever been in a game like this can sympathize with not getting a buff, dying. Your laners yeah. aren't helping you. They're losing their flashes. And... Either you flame your laners or your laners flame you, and you're never making it back in the game. But because X Smithy and the entire team actually did stay cool, playing passively in lane, allowing him to catch up in experience, then he made some really huge plays in team fight. They knew they had late game. They kept it cool and that's why they're able to win well there you have it next up big he's gonna get great shot calling for his win or his role that he's played on optic most recently and he's a guy who the players have been hyping up a lot but he in particular says a lot in the game okay listen 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 camille will be bought we will pressure baron again there's already we already have the mid hit him. If we don't die here, they have to come to us, okay? We're gonna push in. Camille was split. Don't die right now, Dokla. Just back up, back up, back up. Thank you, thank you. I got you, I got you, bro, I got you. You uh, can get back shoot, I'll give you heal. Uh, thank you, baby.
That was to us, the thank you. <laughs> yeah. thank, you thank you for saying for the uh, honors. Shot calling honor. It's yeah. interesting though, right? Because I feel like this guy to some degree has flown over uh, under rather the radar in the public eye in terms mm -hmm. of the value that he's added to this team. But uh, the results to some degree speak for themselves. And the players of that org have also, you know, uh, talked him up in terms of the value that he provides from a shot calling perspective. Yep, we got to hear a little bit of it right there, but it is just so valuable even if everyone is probably going to come to the same conclusion, right. to have it stated by someone so that everyone is guaranteed on the same page. Mm. And that is one of the many things you need to be able to win those close games that Optic has been able to close out. The third and final honor, GG Hart goes to Jensen for picking up that zillion yesterday, foregoing the Oriana, taking a more supportive role in the team and helping yeah. them achieve victory. Everyone has a different definition for GG Hart. <laughs> yeah. Oftentimes I just give it to the guy who probably carried. Yeah. And I don't want to accidentally insult someone by being like, stayed cool when right. they were And they're like, what is it? Is this like, or, does he think I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Great shot calling when he said nothing in chat, but like pinged a lot. Yeah, Jensen, yeah, yeah. I think, actually did dominate this game on Zillion in an also an unconventional way, so that's a good one. I mean, in, in actuality, do, is this is is that the one that you give almost every time? Almost every time, yeah, because I don't want to low-key flame someone by accident. Right. That's just a, such a... I rarely, to avoid conflict. I rarely give great shot calling the because I feel like those, how, how can you, in a solo like, queue game, how can you really determine who's shot calling? Especially when you lose. Like, right. Stayed cool and great shot calling in a loss is really hard to <laughs> you, you'll you're, start you're just way too worried about that. Like, goal, I just give GG if someone, like, hard carried the game. Otherwise, it's one of the other two. Like, someone, I give stay cool a lot. Someone yeah. definitely lost lane probably in the game. Here's a question. Uh, on this desk, who gets what honors? Uh, I don't think I get stayed cool. <laughs> de 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 you definitely <laughs> don't get that one, Mark. Yeah. Although, but then which yeah. one do you get? Because... Well, what's, GG Heart doesn't scream Mark I mean, Z to me either. What's, what's sad is I low key like, flaming if I give you, you guys shot calling. You just cool. said well, that so was. you sarcastically yeah. give him stayed cool. I'll take, stayed cool. I'll take great shot calling and Jack gets GG Heart. Yeah. All right, well, there you have it. That's going to do it for the honors. I did some brain exercises this morning, so I'm ready for our next segment. Time to hand it off for some Jack stats. Time Let's to go. Move. We got the song again. It's been a while. I wonder if they got Mark. a new jingle today. I brought my pen over for some reason. <laughs> I'm gonna write You're gonna it up. You're gonna write up? Oh! Gonna oh! Whoa! Whoa! Since when do we get balloons? This is crazy. What is the production value? Ah! Oh, Wait, these, my, are those oh water balloons? Oh, keep coming. Oh, no, those are mushrooms. Oh, and a Teemo okay. mushroom. Okay. What a so, day. If I pop this, how loud oh, is it gonna goodness. be on broadcast? Very loud. Here's a pen. <laughs> Wait until you get one wrong. All right, this will be the... All right. Hit uh, <laughs> us with some jets. <laughs> Question one. Um, do we have three Teemo mushrooms? I don't know where they're- Pass me the other team of streams for this one. Okay. Anyway, uh, who has the worst damage per minute as Oriana in NALCS history? And I got a multiple choice right here because Keen had one of those games yesterday that was of the top five. These are the top five in a random order. So which oh. one of these guys has oh, the lowest damage tough. per minute all in an Oriana game all time? I feel like- Oh, in a single Oriana game. In a yeah, single yeah, yeah. game. Okay. Okay, so I don't remember a DeMonte game. I don't think it was high. I feel like Link had some games I remember where he was- Underperforming pretty heavily. You remember that golden? Remember the Golden Glue game where he gets like the Quadra or whatever? But like I remember, yeah, it was like a Oriole. really, really poor Oriana game up until that point. I almost feel like it was that game. Do you want to go that? I'll go. Uh, I'll go Link. Just, You're gonna go just Link. On a hunch, I'm gonna go. On a I'm gonna go okay. Golden Glue because of his historically poor performance you feel in like the NALCS. Even people, though but... this split, he's Great. played phenomenally. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I like your instincts, Mark, because we didn't actually reorder them. This is first, like worst. First oh. oh my <laughs> goodness! So Link. <laughs> Pretty close <laughs> together. <laughs> but Keenan, Keenan DeMonte, incredibly close. I think I like exact. I can't wow. put my finger on it, but I think I remember a game where I was just like, what the yeah. heck did maybe Link do? Your team like that team game. was playing against yeah, him. Maybe so, that's uh, right. He was just skilling two, E. That's yeah. CS 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, which team has the best CSD between the 15 and 30 minute mark? I was pulling this a few Ooh. different ways. Like I was gonna do Ooh. total CS, but that was too influenced by game this time. This split. So it's this split between 15 and 30 minutes. Who's first and second in Team CSD Team between 15 and 30? Just kind of throw right. It's got to be something like Team Liquid because they get themselves in holes and then they're able to come back. I'm thinking about the way, or it's something like uh, TSM because they are so passive and farm so much. And most of the time, no, because like, so Smithy actually has really high jungle CSD, which is something you probably, like a lot of people forget about. So I'm okay. down with Team Liquid. I think Team Liquid is a good, is a good uh, answer. I actually <laughs> think the other one might be Optic. Uh, they Farm There's a lot of farming. Lot. I mean, you're okay. looking at 100 Thieves, Optic, TL. So I'll give like... you a hint. It's not Optic. Optic has the most CS at 15 to okay, 30. Maybe but that's it's actually there could be an issue CSD. with Team Liquid's okay. game length. 
though, right? They actually end games it's before 30, 30 minutes. minutes. They so there could be an issue it's, there. It's the difference. Them yeah. versus the opponent. Oh, so it doesn't yeah. matter how long. Exactly. All right, okay. Let's, I'm going to go yeah. Team Liquid then. All right, yeah, I'll do Team Liquid and we need Team Liquid's one. right. Do you have a second place? Uh, let's go... 100 Thieves. TSM. Close. C9. <laughs> oh, that would have been close. It's neither of those teams. That would have been yeah. pretty good. Plus okay. 58 per game for Team Liquid and plus 44 for C9. Is this, is this okay. one? Yeah. Dude, we got a jet stat. Wait, why did you pop the balloon? He got, he got it, wrong. it wrong. He got it half right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good uh, gotcha, we're gonna gotcha. move. This has been a mess. This is the weirdest Question thing we've three. done. <laughs> Who Honestly, is the team? Is the most so this is a really cool stat. Fewest Rift Heralds taken in the NALCS. The team's only taken three Rift Heralds the whole split, but they have the most turrets killed to 15 on average. Huh. Is that, like, is that like, is that like, they kill turrets. I mean, there's a piece of me that wants to say like clutch because Apollo Hako a lot of times can be pretty aggressive in lane and pressure turrets. Um, but I, just, I feel like as a, as a team, they're not super aggressive around. So I'm just gonna go with some early game team that's actually pretty good, which would be the best two teams are C9 and CLG most likely. So, ooh, I'll, CLG's not a bad answer. Yeah, so I'll go CLG. Ooh, uh, I like that. But I'm gonna, uh, just to just to sp keep us spread yeah. and have a better shot, I'll, I'll go clutch. I like the CLG answer though. Whenever there's a weird stat, it's either CLG or Echo Fox. Echo Fox. Oh, Echo Fox. Really? They're they too busy killing turrets to take Rift Heralds. Gotcha. They have a lot of really so bad team often. stats. Like, they have the lowest warding stats it's and really stuff weird, like that. really weird, but they still Do you happen turrets. to know the updated stat on Rift Herald, uh, like, win rates? It's, Remember well, that? When we checked yesterday, yesterday, it was almost was, exactly 50%. Yeah, it was 31 and 30, I believe, yeah. before the five games yesterday, which is just intriguing to me that yeah. it doesn't have as much of an outcome on the result of the game. But next up... Our topic wheel, the Wheel of Misfortune. We've got just enough time to hit a couple of these. So I'm going to have you guys spin the wheel, and then I'll let you know what exactly right. you have to do for me. Is Jack yeah, up really yeah, Go for it, it Jack. Right, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know. Woo! We're getting better at this. Yeah. I think one of us the last is. time I'm doing that. <laughs> well, one of us is getting this, better at this it. This joke yeah. is getting old. Okay, Mission Impossible playoffs for Clutch Gaming. So, we already know the last place team that, it, the bullet that it, it is mathematically possible. So, really yeah. what I want you to do is explain to me how they could complete this mission. How exactly, what do you need to see changed in the team that allows them to make the run to playoffs? Okay, so this team's strength has always been actually late game team fighting, they need to get the whole team aligned on that goal. I'd actually like to see them put Moon in instead of Lyra, since Lyra always likes to make aggressive plays. You keep uh, Apollo and Hakuho on that strategy. I still think, even if it's not meta, you're putting Hakuho on playmakers. He actually hasn't adapted that well to some of the new uh, support picks. They did go on long winning streaks at some point during the spring split. Hopefully they can get that again. Uh, and we talked to Solo yesterday. He's a cool guy. Just keep it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm bought in now. All right. Well, there it is. It's clearly mission possible it's tough. now. <laughs> They're four All right, spin dude. it. If we have time, if we have time, spin it again. Yeah, spin that again. All right, spin it again. Let's Mark's go, Mark. You're up. Quick one. There we go. That's spinning real fast. Now it's got to decelerate quickly yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just grab it. There we go. Ooh, you yeah. Hate, I hate to, see, to that. see that. So this is I just want to know, what is that thing that happens in League of Legends where you're like, ah, you hate it. The worst gut punch feeling when something happens Ooh. in a game. There's two things that instantly spring to mind. I'm not sure which one I hate more. One is just like a missed cannon creep for no reason. Ugh. Watching is painful. Player that, alone in lane mm. misses cannon. Yeah, that feels bad. It's hard to watch. Fail flashes over walls is mm. also a really just sad one. Uh, my, especially my because then it usually results no in death you. to follow. I'm telling you anyway, <laughs> a missed Malphite ultimate. The sound doesn't even play. He just Oh, you don't get the boom there. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he's just like, now I'm in a new location. Anyway, yeah. while the fans came up short yesterday, we found some bright-eyed youngins to throw their own predictions against Mark and Jack. Take a look. TL versus Flyquist. I think TL are going to win just because, you know, historically they came first loss split. And right now, they're having a pretty strong showing so far, so that's why I think they're going to win. I think C9 will win against CLG, because I think uh, they're just looking more cleaner in the recent weeks, and I think Blabber's going to win me 9 I think Echo Fox versus TSM. Uh, TSM, I, be, uh, I want to like uh, go on the TSM side, because uh, I feel like this past few weeks, uh, whenever they lost, we lost. So. I'm kind of hoping the opposite to happen, where like they win and we win, or we win and they win. So um, I want to like uh, root for TSM. Uh, for GGS versus 100 Thieves, I think GGS is gonna win because I want definitely to win. Clutch against Optic. I feel like Optic will win because you know they've been on the upswing. They've they're on a pretty good winning streak right now, and Clutch 
recently dropped their head coach. There's a lot of inner workings going on that I don't understand, but it doesn't seem like it's going well for them. So I think Optic will win. All right, a couple spicy picks from the pros because the two of you are in perfect Ooh. agreement These here are two very on the day. Yeah. Also tied so in the overall pro. standings. I was very close to taking TSM. Yeah, we both talked about that I one a lot. I feel like I'm a little addicted to picking TSM, so I had to like, break out of that. Right. Just because... To me, it was one of those things where they looked very good punishing reactive playstyle yesterday. Echo Fox plays really aggressive and hasn't been clean, so, so you want to take them, but it's just too, too much for me. All right, well, there you have all three, though, predicted Team Liquid across the board for game one. It's time to get into that game, so we're going to head to the Battle Arena.